Hey, good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? <clears throat> Later today, I'm going to have a very important video. I was going to, I was going to share it in this video, but I'm going to do it in its own video. So it's something that you guys can share with other creators of content or other people who do what I do here or something similar that may be thinking about giving up or to people who have already stopped doing this and preaching the literal truth. Not don't, don't send it to the people that are out there doing heresy that are doing evil. Send it to the ones who were doing good, who were sharing the gospel and sharing the truth of God's word and are thinking about giving up, share it with them. I'm hoping that video will be encouragement for them because I believe this is part of our call of what, I'm going to read. It's going to be out of Ezekiel, but we'll get to that at 3 at three p.m. Central Standard Time. This morning, we're going to be reading out of Job 29, 2. Oh, that I were as in months past. The whole verse says, Oh, that I were as in months past, as in the days when God watched over me. He's looking in the past instead of looking towards the future. Job's summary defense, Job further continued his discourse and said, Oh, that I were as in months past. As in the days when God watched over me, when his lamp shone upon my head, and when by his light I walked through darkness, just as I was in the days of my prime, when the friendly counsel of God was over my tent, when the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were around me, when my steps were bathed with cream, and the rock poured out rivers of oil for me. He was so rich that he bathed his front steps with cream. When I went out to the gate by the city, when I took my seat in the open square, the young men saw me and hid, and the aged rose and stood. The princes refrained from talking and put their hand on their mouth. He, this is a very important man. The voice of nobles was hushed, and their tongue stuck to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard, then it blessed me, and when the eye saw, then it approved me, because I delivered the poor who cried out, the fatherless and the one who had no helper. The blessing of a perishing man came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My justice was like a robe and a turban. I was eyes to the blind, and I was feet to the lame. I was a father to the poor, and I searched out the case that I did not know. I broke the fangs of the wicked and plucked the victim from their teeth. Then I said I shall die in my nest and multiply my days as the sand. He just, he keeps going with his discourse. If you watch the series I did on this, he keeps going in this long discourse. But why is he looking in the past, though? Why would he look in the past? Numbers of Christians, Christians can view the past with pleasure, but regard the present with dissatisfaction, much like Job was doing in, his, in that book. They look back upon the days which they have passed in communing with the Lord as being the sweetest and the best they have ever known. But as to the present, it is clad in a sable garb of gloom and dreariness. Once they lived near to Jesus, but now they feel that they have wandered from him. And they say, oh, that I were as in months past. Interesting wording here. <coughs> they feel like they've wandered away from him. You know, he's closer to us when we're heartbroken than he is anything else in this life. And there's a greater communion coming. Why would we look in the past when we know we still have him? They complain that they have lost their evidences or that they have not present peace of mind or that they have no enjoyment in the means of grace or that conscience is not so tender or that they have not so much zeal for God's glory. So what evidences would he be talking about? Well, the evidences people look for, dreams, visions, a, a feeling or a sensation that comes over them. You know, feelings are great. Feelings can be a good warning sign for us. Feelings can be a, a good sign for us to let us know when, when we should defend someone else. You know, that our, our gut feeling comes into play in a lot of things. <coughs> but feeling is nothing when it's compared to the facts, when it's compared to the proofs of God. The evidences that a lot, of, a lot of people look for are those superficial feelings, the superficial things that they think they have, gifts and stuff like that. Those are all great and they serve a purpose, 
But what do we need? And what should we be looking for? What's already there in us? See, Job had it. These Christians have it. It's already there, but they're not looking at it. That's what we should look at. This is where ultimate confidence comes from. So even when there's a dry season, even when the Lord steps away and leaves you to your own devices for a while to see what you'll do, you're a self-starter. You know what you have to do, and you do it. We're being prepared for heaven. Excuse my sinuses. <clears throat> the causes of this mournful state of things are manifold. It may arise through a comparative neglect of prayer, for a neglected closet is the beginning of all spiritual decline, or it may be the result of idolatry. And that's easy to do today. They're turning the Shroud of Turin into an idol. They're Because they're just like, everybody's talking about this nonstop. And, and they're just like, everything is about the, the, the Shroud. It's nothing about the Bible, nothing about God. It's all about the Shroud. They're turning it into an idol. They're turning that into what they're going to worship instead of Jesus Christ. Remember the, the bronze serpent on the pole? Moses was told, make a bronze serpent. All these vipers are all eating or biting these people and they're getting, if they look on the serpent, they look in the direction of the serpent, they'll be healed. That was a picture, that was a, a, a relic, that was a, a, a representation of Christ raised up on the cross. I forget who it was, but what happened years later, somebody actually still had that and they were worshiping it as a relic of Christ instead of worshiping Christ. And that guy went and found it and destroyed it. He destroyed the relics. He destroyed the idols. This is why I tell you guys, be careful how much you, uh, how much credence you put into that cross around your neck or hanging on your rear view or stuck on the back of your car. That can become an idol very easily. Many Christians are stuck in idolatry and don't realize it. The heart has been occupied with something else more than with God. The heart has been occupied with something else more than with God. The affections have been set on the things of earth instead of the things of heaven. A jealous God will not be content with a divided heart. He must be loved first and best. He will withdraw the sunshine of his presence from a cold, wandering heart. Or the cause may be found in self-confidence and self-righteousness. There's a great many people that are in this boat. Pride is busy in the heart, and self is exalted instead of lying low at the foot of the cross. Christian, if you are not now as you were in months past, do not, be, do not rest satisfied with wishing for a return of former happiness, but go at once to seek your master and tell him your sad state. Have I not reiterated the same point to you guys? Go tell him. Ask his grace and strength to help you, to walk more closely with him, humble yourself before him, and he will lift you up and give you yet again to enjoy the light of his countenance. Do not sit down to sigh and lament while the beloved physician lives there as, lives there as hope, and he lives forever, so there's always hope. Nay, there is a certainty of recovery for the worst cases. Jesus said, I will not break the bruised reed. I will not quench the smoking flax. He said, I will heal their backsliding. I will leave the 99 and seek out the one who has wandered away. Those that are his, and he knows that those that are his, he will go after. But how much better would it be if we just stayed in the sheepfold in the first place? And how do we do that? Do what we know we should be doing. Don't get caught up in the world's activities. You know, there's, like, there's a lot of people that watch a lot of other channels. I don't watch those channels because I don't want to become distracted like they are. And so I don't put myself in that situation. I stay away from it. If I know there's something wrong there, I don't, I don't pay attention to them anymore. Because I don't want to get caught up in what they're doing and end up getting led away from what my focus is supposed to be, from what I should be doing. We should be dedicated to whatever the Lord has given us and dedicated to him being the center of our focus. Oh, there's all kinds of other things that will take up your time. It's just the way life is. But he still, no matter what, must be the center of your focus. 
if he cannot be, if he can't be the center of your focus, how can we say that we're with him? How can we say that we're on his side? It's a terrible thing. A lot of people want to make that claim, yet they go exactly the opposite direction from where they should go. A great many Christians are getting pulled away and distracted and drug off into different directions because of what we see happening today. That We need to stay so vibrantly focused on Christ. We need to stop focusing so much on the things of the world and dedicate our time to him. What do we have? What don't we have? What do we need? And what don't what can't we provide? Who cares? All of us are in some state of, of not needing something, but having, you know, we have the, the basics. And Jesus said, if you have food and clothes, be happy. Everything else is a blessing on top of that. Be happy. Always remember your Lord had less than you. No home, no bed. He said, I have no place to lay my head. The foxes have their their dens. I have no place to lay my head. He had no money, no food. The Lord provided everything for him. We spend so much time caught up in the world's activities and caught up in, in the things that pertain to life that we start to forget God. Well, some of those things we have to do, it's unavoidable, but we can still keep God first in all those things. And that goes into our behaviors, that goes into our, our, our mindset on how we approach these things and look at these things. And what we dedicate that time to, do we dedicate it to the activity, to the world, to the other people, or do we dedicate that activity to God? What does the Bible say? When a Christian eats, he eats unto God. When he drinks, he drinks unto God. Everything we do is for the glory of God. That changes a lot of things that we do. <laughs> so instead of looking at what we used to have, let's be thankful for what we have now. And let's make him the center of every bit of it. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. And to lift you up and to sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this devotion. Thank you for this holy, wonderful word you've provided for us for all these generations. That we can return back to it and learn, grow, become your children. One of the most terrible things to happen to our world is, is all the distractions that we have. It's so easy to get distracted. You know this. It's so easy to get our focus off track and not keep you centered. So we constantly need your reminders to keep us centered and focused on you. To keep us where you are. To keep us looking to you. We see this today in our little communities or here on YouTube and other places. We see so many people giving up, so many people wandering away, so many people getting distracted, so many people who were right on track and all of a sudden they're off in the darkness what's happening and it bothers us because we don't know what to do we don't know what to say we don't know how to get them back on track well luckily it's not up to us but it's fully up to you because you know those that are yours and you will strengthen it and encourage those that are yours you know those that are not yours and you will deal with them but you know those who are going to wander and you have a plan for them too. And you're going to bring them back because they belong to you. But in the interim, Lord, teach us how to make you the center of all things in our lives. Teach us how to help and, and encourage and lead them back if possible. Teach us how to stay focused. In a world that is designed to distract us with nonsense, utter nonsense. Teach us to stay focused, focused on your word, focused on you, focused on our Lord Jesus Christ, focused on what we should be doing, what you've given us to do, that we may glorify you in everything possible as we finish out our lives here on this earth for your glory, 
Father, thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for Morning Devotion. It's really easy to get distracted. It's really easy to get caught up in the past. Oh, I remember how things used to be. I wish it was back the way it was. Be happy for what you have now. Be happy that it's moved forward. Because if it was back the way it was, I just want everybody to stop and consider this. If you say you wish it was back the way it was 20 years ago, that means there's another 20 years to get to where we're at now. <laughs> I'd rather be forward a couple of years. Just saying. Be thankful for what you have now. The past is done and over with. It's already been set in stone. It's finished. But the future is still being still being learned, still being made. It's, it, the future is still being reached by us. Be happy. Be thankful for what you have now. Don't live in the past. And don't live in the things of the world. Instead, live in God. Live in Jesus Christ. Because that is where our help, our strength, our providence is. Our guidance, our teaching, our sh everything comes from. And when we keep him center focus, when we keep him at the forefront of all things, like I, the analogy I gave yesterday, you're making green beans, you're making beans, corn, macaroni and cheese. These are all side dishes. These all sit on the back burner. You're still paying attention to them because you don't want them to burn, but they're not the main focus. The main focus is the main dish. That's on the front burner. The other ones can sit there and simmer. This, you have to put your focus on. That's God. We have to put our focus on him. All these other things still have a little bit of our focus because we have to tend to them. That's the things of life. But the main dish is, is him, and we need to be focused fully on him. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.